Okay, so nothing I'm about to say here has any standing in scientific fact. All this is just speculation based on my own experiences. But snow environments in video games make me sad. The first time I ever played World of Warcraft, I chose to create a dwarf character, a hunter, because I wanted guns and animal companions. But then I was spawned in a desolate, snow-covered valley. Coldridge Valley, to be precise. This was not a place I wanted to be as I began learning the ins and outs of World of Warcraft. Coldridge Valley is just a small part of a greater snowy area known as Dunmora, where starter dwarf characters eventually meet up with starter gnome characters, and eventually with all sorts of alliance characters in the dwarven capital city of Ironforge. But for whatever reason, I just really didn't enjoy being in that valley. The color palette was justifiably bare, various metal tones of dwarven armor amongst the whites and grays of the snow. The whole area is somewhat claustrophobic, even when the confines of Coldridge Valley eventually opened up to the greater valley of Dunmoro proper, and the whole area suffered from that traditional tedium of starter tasks in any big MMO. I can't recall entirely how long it was before I'd decided I'd had enough of that snowy valley. In my memory, it was a couple of days after I'd first made the account, but I know it couldn't have been too long in game time because I was still very underleveled when I decided to attempt an exodus from the valley. Various WoW wikis list the Dunmora area as being level 1 to 20. The only way out of the valley, if you're not catching a flight out of Ironforge, is through a tunnel in the east, a tunnel to the Verdant Lochmoden. So there I went, underleveled and eager to be rid of the frozen wastes of Dunmora. But here was the problem. Lochmoden was a level 10 to 60 area, which to my poor underleveled dwarf meant near instant death. I begrudgingly had to return to Dunmora to grind my way up to an appropriate level, and I hated every minute of it. Now this memory stuck with me when I returned to WoW a few years later. I made a Draenei character that time around, and was met by a much brighter and more hospitable starter area than my dwarf. But did the snowy valley of Dunmoro really give me some sort of digital seasonal affective disorder? I didn't really have any experience with real seasonal affective disorder until I was in college in Kentucky. The only two places I'd lived before that were California and Florida, neither of which suffered from remarkably inhospitable winters. But Kentucky was the furthest I'd ever lived from the ocean. This removal from the coast and inevitable months of snowfall drained the life from me. I quickly discovered that I am not a person suited for that kind of environment. In part because it's just kind of oppressive. The winter looms over you and blocks out the rest of the world. A heavy snowfall is claustrophobic. But living on the coast is a very wide open living arrangement. Sure, you might get some fog in the morning or rain in the afternoon, but when the sky clears and the sun breaks through, the world feels infinite. Snow builds barriers. It prevents passage. But this hasn't affected every game I've played with a snow level, what few of them I have in my library. I didn't mind the avian peaks in Hyperlight Drifter, though this is also the most stylized game I could use as an example and probably speaks to why I don't mind it so much. Some of the more extreme winter weather in the Frozen Wilds expansion of Horizon Zero Dawn, as well as some of the more remote areas of the base game, bordered on being too much for me, especially when the snowfall would start to limit the in-game visibility. The limited time winter cycle in GTA Online is my least favorite time to play that game, even with friends, for all the reasons I hated the Dwarven starter area in WoW. All the openness of Los Santos and the surrounding regions turn into a claustrophobic nightmare when you add snow. LEGO Racers 2, another of my absolute favorite games, had a few different environments you could explore in the game's free roam mode, one of which was Arctic themed, and my least favorite of the worlds you could travel to. There's only so much you can do with a frozen game environment. I loved Monster Hunter World, but I abandoned the Iceborne expansion after a few hours because it was just too much to trudge through all that snow. And even though the trudging made sense, contextually, I don't derive enjoyment from that. Much like in real life, snow is a nightmare to traverse, and in terms of video game movement and traversal, snow usually adds two things, slowing and sliding. Thick snowbanks slow your character down, and patches of ice send you careening off in unplanned directions. Snow is made to frustrate. It is not often made to be fun. But for all these reasons I dislike snowy environments, I do think there are proper times to use them. Times when that overpowering feeling of claustrophobia and desperation can add to the game's mood. The latter portion of Journey is a prime example. 
Journey begins in a seemingly endless desert, and gradually you traverse your way to the mountain that's been looming in the distance. An antagonist has been following you, a stony winged creature like a monstrous eel or ray from the deep ocean. But when you arrive at the mountain, you realize that the mountain too is an antagonist. The mountain is brutal and inhospitable, slowing your progress as your pursuers draw ever closer. But in this moment, you're meant to feel trapped. You're meant to feel desperate. The snow on the mountain is doing its job admirably. Likewise, the snowy surface of the Metro franchise serves a unique function within that world. Unlike the mountain in Journey, the snow and ash-covered cities of the first two Metro games are the most spacious in the game, but also the most desolate. The claustrophobic underground cities of Moscow's Metro system are packed and bustling with life. There is music, frivolity, and a joy in the world of the underground. But the world above is barren and empty, apart from the monsters that roam the snow of Moscow's nuclear winter. In Metro, the snow is not so much a physical impediment to your character, but an emotional one. The winter is a reminder of the tragedy that befell Moscow all those years ago. As long as snow lingers on the ground, Moscow can never heal, can never be what it once was. And maybe that's my issue with a great many snowy environments, that they don't feel necessary. And maybe that's just my bias. For someone born and raised in Southern California, snow will never feel natural to me. I want sunlight. I want wide open spaces. My absolute favorite environment of any recent video game is from Destiny 2's Curse of Osiris expansion, where you're able to travel to a past version of Mercury after it was terraformed by the Traveler. The version of Mercury you travel back to is a bright, open, stunning place, almost like stepping into a piece of Roger Dean or John Harris artwork. Conversely, I didn't really enjoy the snow-covered Cosmodrome of Destiny's Rise of Iron expansion, even though I really enjoyed all the content it added. I'd much rather wander through the verdant jungles of Venus or the chitin-covered halls of the Dreadnought than spend any more time than I absolutely have to trudging through the snow-covered fields of old Russia. But I get it. Logically. The new social space Bungie added to Rise of Iron was at the top of a mountain. Snow. Old Russia is, well, just that. Old Russia. Snow. I get it. But it's the games that find ways to give that sorrowful substance meaning that I really appreciate. If you're going to make me spend time in the snow, I want it to mean something. Hey everybody, this is Jake Terrio with Subpixel. If you've made it this far, hopefully it means you enjoyed that video that you just watched. So if you could leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're not subscribed already, that lets us and our robot overlords at YouTube know that this video is worth watching. So thank you for that, and we'll see you next time.